exact same time every day. These are exercises in preparation for developing out of ourselves these new rhythms. So, many people have asked me when I presented this, that if our physical bodies are going away, how many more incarnations do I have left to work out my karma? Because Snyder said, it's really important to work out your karma. And he spent the last year of his life giving us karmic relationships. And if you haven't read that series, I highly recommend you do it sooner than later. He felt this was his spiritual mission to bring the relationship of karma to Christianity and to the Western path. So how many car incarnations? Do you think it's hundreds, maybe thousands? Let's do the math. We take the year 6400 from when women would be infertile, subtract, ooh, that was last year I did this, and divide by 2160 and assume we get three incarnations per cycle of the sun through the zodiac sign. That means we have six incarnations left. Mm -hmm. Start working on your karma, folks. <laughs> So, he says they're non-human beings, these spiritual beings, that are descending from all the planets and the Vulcan sphere to us to help. And they happened since 1880, when Michael overcame the dragon. And I mentioned this, the great teachers of humanity who left with the moon are primarily the ones that we should be able to contact with our consciousness, soul, developed state of today. I suspect none of us can say they have that conversation with those beings yet. When you say descending, do you mean incarnating? No, not incarnating. They will not take on any physical body because that interferes with our freedom. They will remain spiritual beings, and they will absolutely honor our human freedom. So there's non, no non-humans that are in human bodies? Oh, that's a different question. Uh -huh. and, and every entity that was to be on the human stage is here now, or has been here recently. And so you have Steiner says, there will be beings who will incarnate, who have no ego. And we'll see in a minute, there are beings who are incarnating, who are already many steps ahead towards the development of Jupiter, who we would say their integration of body and soul doesn't match our integration of body and soul. So, Things are going to be changing. We, I have a foster child who was severely abused as a child, a very young child, and um, her ability to be fully integrated here, you know, I, yeah, I don't think it will happen. But the kinds of things that Camp Hill is doing is so moving and so dramatic for our human history and our development of our ability to handle those who will be human on Jupiter. So we're getting lots of trainings in all different ways to handle our future responsibilities. We are being made stronger by each of these challenges. So more and more beings are going to be among us. And he calls the thinking that we have today this dead thinking, shadowy thinking. And we have to end. You know, I'm always thinking of Plato's cave when I hear that term, but we have to, again, find ourselves having a thinking that has become alive. This is a thinking that, um, some people call it heart-based thinking instead of brain-based thinking, but it begins to use the etheric body again. And what does that mean? So I'm not going to try to answer that because it will take us too far afield tonight, but this is 
an important theme for many anthroposophists. And if we look at procreation, Steiner says the only way we will continue to have a connection to the continuing of Earth evolution, which is necessary, is through the powers of darkness, because the powers of light will have withdrawn. So he talks about where eugenics is supposed to be developed in the Russian east of Europe. And he says the, the east will develop powerful tendencies which do not allow physical human reproduction to continue beyond the sixth period of civilization, but instead let the earth enter into a form of existence in soul and spirit. You don't find body there. So if we are withdrawn, where our existence, our lowest entity, seems to be just soul and spirit. Think about what that means, the development of those. And then he goes, other impulses for the seventh post-Atlantean age, which is the American one, um, which is a necessary part to finish this Earth evolution and to finish the post-Atlantean period, it will be guided by impulses from the cast-down angels, and those impulses will reside here in America. We have to ask what kind of bodies. Yes. I'm just wondering where it fits in the, the aspect of uh, reproduction here in the uh, So this is way out there in the future. When we are able to impart life to something, but what this gentleman's bringing up is that Steiner talks about in the future we will procreate out of our own being through the larynx. And at that time, we can say that as the word became flesh, the flesh will have become word. And, and so we will, be able, we will be creative beings out of the spoken word. But we will be very different beings then. And what will be the larynx, we would have to say, is probably an etheric larynx at that point. But that's why we have you with me. I mean, that's, that's why, why he had, brought you with me into being. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's very important to be working in this etheric, and this is where one finds the Christ today. So what will life be like in that 11th millennium? We already know women will be infertile. You know, we already know that before that we will probably have a lot of test tube babies long before that. And we might, in our next incarnation, have to incarnate into a test tube baby. And we were talking at dinner tonight, or earlier today, about what will be missing in those babies that come through mm -hmm. in, in vitro fertilization. The moon's going to recombine. There will be forces and beings that we don't know anything about, but we can say physical life, at least as we know it will no longer be possible. It's not that far away. So our thoughts today will become the reality in the future. Everything from our inside and our soul life becomes expressed in the outer world. So new beings will arise about this time of the war of all against all in this American period. And he says, the earth will be covered by an electric mass, a kind of spider web, and spider-like beings will go around. Some of you may have read an article by Sergei Bakovia about five years ago called The Being of the Internet. Mm -hmm. And I think he scared an awful lot of anthropologists because he talked about these. And we will talk tomorrow morning about automatons, but Steiner says they will be something like an automaton. They will have life that is between the mineral and the plant, so it's not quite alive. We won't have this ability to procreate out of the larynx at that time. But they will have a 
abundant intelligence. You can see that coming. With our artificial intelligence today. And this whole world will be connected electronically to a network where these spiders exist. Can, is that reminds me of Revelation with the scorpions with the faces of men. Thank you for saying that, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, this slide looks a little bit small. I thought I had copied and doubled it in size, but I'll try to pick out some of the main points here is that it talks about um, the time of the separation of the moon and then its return, what was going on at that time, and the raising of science to the level of artistic perception. So science today is caught in its own web of materialism. And the only way out of that is to teach the scientists to see like an artist. They need to develop new capacities. And when we bring science and art together again, then things will be able to progress in the right way. So science must become a form of art. Sorry, I made this so small. And then um, the mineral structure in man about that part of his being, which will one day be woven into a network of spider-like creatures extending over the earth. So this is multiple places he brings this up about this future, right before the war of all against all. So uh, just a couple more things on this replacing. Um, his birth from woman began with the departure of the moon. So this is us as human beings. When the moon left, that began this um, being born through a woman. If you want to know when that occurs in the Bible, this is at the time of Seth. Seth is the first being who was born in the likeness of his parents. Before that, all beings were in the likeness of the Elohim. So that period in, the, in Genesis where Seth is, is the period when the moon departs. And then it is only by developing an inner understanding for what is truly artistic that man will be able to understand the realm that is higher than the mineral existence, that realm of which we see an expression in the actual shaping and form of the surfaces of things in the world. So um, it goes on in this evolution of human freedom and personal consciousness that the moon will return. And we know that scientists today think this is far off, but it's not. We know that women will become infertile. Um, and it gives a date. And then um, our connection with the Earth is going to be very, very different afterwards. And he talks about super earthly beings, these beings from these different planets arriving. And he goes into this in occult science. Um